Hello, what's up, you guys? How are you doing? Uh, I'm just getting ready. I just wanted to make sure people could come in before we started talking about the real important stuff in uh, that's going on right now. It doesn't matter where you come from. Voting is always important. I think it's it's my it's my first time voting, and um, I'm kind of nervous. Uh, but I I got my ballot and I'm excited. I know I know what's up. I know who I'm gonna vote for and. Yeah, I mean, I think the most important thing is doing your research. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about that and the Latino vote. And um, I'm going to be talking to this really, really cool, really cool person. This, this girl boss, she's the definition of that, I think. Um, she is a civil rights activist, attorney. Uh, her name is Monica Ramirez. She's from Ohio. I'm from Ohio. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, 216. Uh, Angel Chavez, I'm actually 19, um, but it will be my first time voting uh, soon, very soon, um, which is amazing. I mean, I, I, let me pull up the stats right now. I believe she's going to be joining us soon, but and we'll talk more about this. But Latinos are the second largest voting bloc for the first time in American history with 32 million eligible voters. Isn't that amazing that's i mean that's iconic uh and it it honestly will be one of the most critical i think one of the most critical elections in our lifetime uh that we will be able to vote for um yeah and we're gonna talk about like being a latina in her industry and in mine i know what that's like uh, i have personal experience <laughs> and it, oh there she is activist monica ramirez let's see how do i do this go live with activists I put activist in my name. <laughs> okay, we're waiting for him. And hey, what's up? Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good. It's nice to meet you virtually, like how I'm meeting a lot of people these days. It's so good to meet you. And, you know, I heard, you know, we're fellow Buckeyes. So that is extraordinary. I can't wait for us to talk about that. Yep. Well, I mean, okay, I'm not really that into, like, um like football and stuff like that i'd say i'm more into like basketball football like football not like football football you know yeah yeah <laughs> um, yeah but yeah i mean i i loved the Cavs. um i love the Cavs to this day uh but a lot of like i'm in la right now i just moved to la maybe a year ago and um it's kind of crazy like the love that they have for their sports teams here is is amazing i mean the dodgers yeah the dodgers just won That's the dodgers just won yeah i'm actually not big into sports myself but you know coming from ohio it's i'm always super excited when i get to meet another latina from ohio because people don't really think about latinas from ohio no they don't like latinos in the midwest are so overlooked we're like kind of forgotten in a way i mean i mentioned i'm like when people ask me where i'm from like oh i'm from ohio and People are like, what are you doing out there? Like, that's that doesn't make sense. And like, actually, they, they don't know that there's a huge population of Latinos there. And yeah, yeah, born there, born and raised there. It's it's amazing. Well, I'm happy to share that with you, and I'm really happy to share this conversation with you about the Latinx vote. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm really excited. I think it. I think I mean, well, thank you to Voto Latino for putting us in touch, and now we're able to have this conversation. That I feel like is is so crucial. And I think I'm gonna learn a lot today. I think everyone's gonna learn a lot today. If you guys have questions, just put them in the comments. But I just wanted to talk a little bit because it's my first time voting. Um, and personally, I found it a bit intimidating at first because, yeah. you know, it's just like, it, it, it is intimidating. It, it's, it's a lot, the process seemed really, really annoying and long from the way that I saw it. But you know, yeah. having people speak up and like direct me to organizations and like kind of make the process a little bit easier and simplify it really helped me a lot. And what once was like kind of intimidating to me now is like part of what's empowering me. And so I think that's amazing. And I think uh, I think it's not too late to vote if you guys haven't voted yet. I believe in some states they do have a later deadline for 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 that um for registrating oh sorry um, yeah yeah well first of all congratulations and that's really thrilling that this is going to be your first time voting and you know you definitely are not voting in a regular election year that's for sure so for everyone who's a first-time voter 
you know, I think that it's probably seems much more complicated than in, in ordinary voting years, given everything that's happening with COVID. But, you know, thankfully, we have groups like Voto Latino who are helping to put out great information about what we can do to make sure that we're voting and voting safely. Yeah, we got to vote safely. And honestly, I think I'm going to vote in person. I think I'm going to go and drop off my ballot because okay. I uh, it's my first time. And I just want to like make it special, you know, whatever. But uh, I think a lot of people are really skeptical about mailing in the ballot. And, and I think I'm all for it because it's safe. But uh, for example, like in, yeah. in a neighborhood in LA recently, um, there was there were ballot boxes that was that were lit on fire and actually in a predominantly Latino neighborhood, which is weird, because I don't know why they're, they're just going after Latinos who are actually they tend to be more Republican leaning um, because of the normally like Catholic and Christian values that they hold, um, which is so I think it's just a thing of I don't know if it's like a hate crime lighting the ballot boxes on fire. I don't know if it has to do with just color in general, if that's just the, the issue here. But I mean, it is it is a I do. I did question it myself when people were like, "Oh yeah, you can vote in your ballot. Like, I'm mailing your ballot, and it'll be safe." I don't know what your opinion is on that. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that you know, to your point earlier about you know, you know, different states have different rules. First of all, that's true, and and in some states it's too late to register. The deadline has passed, but in other states there's the ability to you know register um, day up. So it's really important to go new organizations like Voto Latino who have, you know, state by state information related to what the rules are, the laws are in each in each place. And I think and the other thing is um, there's a lot of good resources about what the options are. So as you're saying, some people are afraid to mail in their ballot because they're not sure if it'll arrive. And um, you know, right now I know that a lot of groups are saying if you have your ballot, you you know, you should take it to a ballot box or you should, you know, take it in person to the Board of Elections and um, because people are concerned that they won't make it if you mail it now. So I think, first of all, just understanding what are all your options. And um, I think for people who are considering voting in person like you, you know, I, I think, you know, with respect to COVID, you know, all the rules stand, right? Like we have to make sure that we're wearing our masks and that we're social distancing. And, you know, I've read a lot of great materials that talk about, um, you know, how to prepare to vote. So a reminders about washing our hands right before we vote and right after and having hand sanitizer and having um, wipes in order to wipe down the voting equipment. And so I don't want this to feel overwhelming because people have put together checklists and tools to tell people how to vote safely. And uh, Voto Latino is one of those organizations where people have said, you know, here are the things that you should be thinking about. If you want to vote by mail, here are some considerations. If you want to drop it off at the ballot box, here's how you know the ballot box is legit. If you want to vote in person, like here are some of the things that you need to do in order to stay safe. So I think for first time voters, including you, the good thing is there's lots of folks that have been thinking about this for a long time to help put the materials together to try to make it seem as manageable as possible. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm also like I'm getting tested so much recently and like I'm trying to stay safe too because my mom is immune compromised. So mm. I do, I'm super paranoid. And I think like, yeah, and knowing that people are prepared and also thinking about this is safe too. Cause, cause it, it was, for a while it seemed to me that no one really cared. No one really cared that COVID was happening. And I was like, this is kind of weird. Why are people just living their regular lives? And what, what is going on? Is this just, is there not a pandemic anymore? Even people who are close to me were like, I don't believe in it. And I was like, that's the most ridiculous thing ever. But yeah, if you guys want to know like more about voting and whatnot, the easiest, I think the easiest thing is to go to votolatino.org slash election. I think I'm going, that, I'm going to put that in the chat right now. Um, yeah, that's really helpful. I, you know, I spent some time looking at all the resources and it's great because they're just all in one place and it gives you, you know, things to think about that maybe I would have forgotten, you know, to take wipes or what have you, but it's all there so people can check it out and, you know, keep that with you as your own checklist. Um, but I want to talk about this, this is your first time voting. And what does this mean for you? And what does this mean for your family? Uh, I mean, it's, it's very exciting. I think uh, I'm, I've learned a lot more about politics recently. I used to really not care. I'm going to be honest. Like, I used to think that it didn't affect my life. I used to think, and it's not like, I, I think I was just ignorant. I, I, I knew that it had a lot of importance. I think I was just 
I just wanted to not know about it because it honestly brought me a lot of misery because every time my parents brought it up, it had to do with immigrants trying to get your citizenship. All of this stuff that just like kind of felt like it was weighing down on my soul and my spirit. And mostly because I felt like I couldn't really do anything about it to change mm. it. And when they talked about it, they seemed so hopeless because I have family members who have been trying to get a citizenship here for over 20 years. And so do so many of my friends. Like, so many yeah. people who are, I obviously, they're my family. Like, they're really good people. And they've been working. And But there is, there is no guarantee to citizenship. That's the problem. There's no pathway to citizenship that is very easy. And DACA, DACA is not one of them. It's helping, but it is not one of them. And... Um, it just, it just felt, it just felt very, just, I felt very hopeless in the situation until mm -hmm. recently when I realized it affected my life way more than I thought it did. Um, mm -hmm. And it's in my everyday life too, like the state elections, what are, which are equally as crucial and important, voting for mm -hmm. your, your local senators and like people, people who will be, um, sorry, uh, people who will be like affecting your day-to-day -day lives with the decisions that they make about the schools, the streets, um, parking even, or highways, freeways, anything. It's, it's really, really important to be involved and know more about it. And um, again, like I, when I'm voting this year, I will be voting for the family members who have just been not getting given a fair chance to become citizens in this, in this, in this country. And um, yeah, I'll be voting for them. They, they can't vote. Yeah. All we want, you know, what's crazy is like all we want is to feel more connected as family members as family and that's something that everyone has in common so yeah why is it so hard for my family because they're brown you know i feel like, brown. <laughs> you know yeah i mean you're like, i feel like these points are so important because first of all you know for those who are voting for the first time voting can be difficult right we have a lot to figure out there are obstacles to voting there's a lot of information we have to learn and then to the point about um you know citizenship and a lot of our community members um don't have the right to vote and and many of our community members are undocumented but i think that this you know really understanding that there are many ways that we can be civically engaged right whether that be like sharing voting for someone else voting for our family who can't vote or you know on their behalf or in their honor um sharing information with people who can vote about why it's important like i feel like sometimes the conversation around voting or, um or civic engagement is is um, does it, we don't always talk about all the, all the other ways in which we can be powerful and exercise our civic power and definitely, you know, helping to get information to people who can vote or maybe are not as interested in, in letting them understand why it's so important um, and, and whose honor we're voting on behalf of. It's, I think that's really critical in this time. At the end of the day, these people that we're voting for are old. They're very old and they're very out of touch. And norm normally that is the case. And I think at the end of the day, you're not going to agree with everything they say. It's more has to do with what you agree with the most that they're saying, what you're with the most, you know? Um, so don't go for someone who you think is the second coming of Christ. It's not going to work. It's not going to happen. They're politicians. Okay. So you need to just make sure you do your research and yeah. don't let anything that your family members say sway you or in, impact you or affect you. You just need to do your own research, question everything, believe nothing. And that is the only way that I think that you can make an empowering decision that you'll feel good with at the end of the day and not feel guilty about. Um, because yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, you know, I live in, I still live in rural Ohio. So um, here where I live, I think, you know, understanding the importance of, um, of all the local politicians really is critical because there are, you know, sometimes people think about the a presidential election and they're thinking only about um, those who are running for president. And we have to make sure people understand that down ballot, right, all of the state, uh, the folks running for state offices and local offices, they are the people who, as you say, are affecting our daily lives. And I feel like in rural Ohio, where I am, where there aren't many elected mixed people, by the way, um, you know, it's even more important to tell people that it really does matter. Because I hear from people sometimes like, oh, why am I going to vote? Doesn't matter. You know, my vote isn't important. And, and it really is important, especially in these local races. So you're saying you're rural Ohio. I mean, being from Cleveland, there is more of a population of Latinos here because yeah. there, when I lived there, uh, like a year ago, not even, I grew up there and there was a community, mostly Puerto Ricans, I think. And, yeah. you know, but it was nice having something there. And it is more of like a city kind of. Uh, so maybe that's why. But 
I just want to know more what it's like in your industry. I know what it's like in mine as a Latina in the Hollywood industry. That's complicated enough. But I, I wonder, like, <laughs> as a decision maker, as a woman, too, and not, not just a Latina, like a woman, how do they see you? How do you feel like, do you feel like you're doing what you want to do and what you came here on this earth to do? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I, uh, you know, I grew up an activist. You know, I come from a migrant farm worker family that settled in Ohio. They used to travel, you know, picking crops in Mississippi and Michigan and other places. And um, and when my family settled here in Ohio, my parents made it a priority to teach us to give back. And so since I was pretty young, I've been involved in the community. And, and now as a professional, you know, I focus on my work on um, the Latinx community, civil rights and human rights for farm workers and migrant women. Um, and I think where I am in, in rural Ohio, because we are the minority of the population here, um, but farm workers help build this community, right? There are a lot of farms here. We help build this community. So it's a really interesting time because we're, we have the chance to exercise our power and, and use our voices in a, in a very particular and important way right now and in a way that didn't happen before, right? There weren't people who looked like us who were running for office. There weren't people like us who had our stories who were running for office and that's starting to change. And um, I think that helps motivate younger Latinx folks and BIPOC folks in the area to understand that we do have a say and we can make a difference. I think it's really important what you're doing and the fact that you come from like very humble beginnings. You know you know the experience of these people who helped build America, these far farmers and migrant workers who I'm sure were affected really negatively by the coronavirus in, in ways that I can't even imagine. And I think it's important for you and I, you know, coming from these small towns, coming from places where the odds were stacked against us now we've reached a point where they didn't want us to be a position of power where they didn't want us to be and now we can speak for those people these people who are normally handed is nepotism these products of nepotism who are used to being in these positions of power are now i guess they're kind of feeling a little bit intimidated by the people who are coming and aren't afraid to say it how it is say it like it is um and that's kind of my goal too as somebody with a different a platform still just like a little different you know i have a lot of kids following yeah me. um i try to educate them as much as possible uh, and I want to, I want to, I want to continue doing so. So I think conversations like this, I'm going to put this on my Instagram feed. I want to make sure that they see it. I want to make sure that they, they know what's up and know that the voting is crucial and important. Even if you're too young to vote, just tell yes. your friends, if you can drive, drive your families to the voting polls and the, and, or drop off their ballots, offer to drop off their ballots. Just be involved in as many ways as you can. Because I think that's something when I was 16, I think I was 16 or 15 in the 2016 elections. All I wanted was to, I just wanted to help somehow. And I knew that I, yeah. I knew that I, I couldn't like actually do something. Or I thought I couldn't, but I mean, now that I'm looking back in retrospect, I just should have, I just should have done more. I think, I think I could have honestly. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, part of our job is to tell people what more they can do, because I think people get confused, right? They don't realize that there are things that we can do, even if we're not the ones who are voting, right? So I think talking to people about where to find information, how to help people who maybe don't know how to get their ballots to the voting, um, the, the Board of Elections, um, you know, sharing information like Voto Latino's election site, like those are all things that we can do that are really, really important, especially right now, because um, there is a lot of disinformation. So we have to look at reliable sources like Voto Latino so that people know, okay, this is information that I can trust and I'm gonna share it with my family. I'm gonna put it on my social media. You know, I'm gonna tell my friends about it. All of that matters, all of it counts. Yes, 100%, yeah. And I, I can't wait, honestly, I think, I think we're headed in a really good direction. I really love people like AOC. I think she's killing it. Um, I think she's making a really strong impact and. And I, I want to continue like talking about kind of, I, I want to continue talking about that on my platform. Like, I think it's important to really speak your opinions and you don't let other people and other people's words kind of dim your light. I think you should really speak, talk to your family members about this. Don't be afraid of having these conversations. Come at, yeah. it, with, come at it with facts, come at it with logic. Definitely talk to your old uncles who are stubborn with their ways and try to just break down that wall and help them see politics for what they really are, which is just the advocacy for humans. It's just, humans. yeah, that's all it is. You know, that, that's true. And you know, a lot of times because I'm an activist, people will say things to me like, how did you become an activist? Or, you know, I, I want to, I'm thinking about becoming an activist. And the truth is 
what we need to do in this election and just in our lives is think about what we care about. What are the issues that we care about? We know the Latinx community cares about the economy. We care about healthcare. We care about education. We care about climate. We care about immigration. We care about so many things. And if we just start with the issues that we care about and talk about the issues that we care about with our friends and family and with our tios and, you know, and with other people, um, you know, around us, then those are the building blocks that will help, um, you know, as we sort of build our muscle as advocates and activists, but also in just trying to make sure that people get information, not just about candidates, but also about the issues that impact our lives. 100%. So what are you, so you're, you know, you have an audience and you're engaging with folks and I'm sure folks have a lot of questions. Um, and the uh, young Latinx vote is so important. And first time voters like yourself there, I think I've read something that said something more than like 600,000 young Latinx voters had already engaged in early voting um, as of the last article I read, which is an incredible and awesome number. And so, you know, what is your message to these other first time voters? My message to you, I think, I think definitely do your research. Um, like I said earlier, question everything, believe nothing. You need to make sure that you're strong and remember your values, of course, when you're voting for people and um, try to do as much as you can in your everyday lives. It's so possible. It's so crucial. Like everything, every, and as much as you think politics is annoying or boring or it's not fun to talk about, or you don't think it affects you, that's because usually if you think that that's the case, it's because it doesn't, it, it, cause it already benefits you. It already benefits you. You come mm -hmm. from a society or a place in society that doesn't really get affected by these decisions that people are making for the migrant workers, the farmers, the people who actually are affected by the decisions. So think again, when you think that politics is boring or when you think it doesn't affect you, when you think it doesn't matter, it does. And I think that's the most important thing to take away is just to care. It's cool to care. It's awesome. I couldn't agree more. It is cool to care. I'm gonna, that's going to be my new tagline. It's cool to care. Yes. <laughs> it's cool to care. And it's also important to get the right information. So, you know, I'm really happy that you pinned the, the Voto Latino information down here on this, on this uh, chat so that people could get that info and, and check it out, you know, and, and if you have doubts, you know, you're, you're still, maybe if you're still skeptical, check out that website. And, and learn more and, and figure out um, based on this information that's there, uh, you know, how you can get engaged and, and, may, and, and I'm sure it'll answer some of the big questions that you have as well. Yes, amazing. Thank you so much, Monica. Like I learned, I learned so much and I'm just gonna be, I'm just gonna be doing a lot more things in my daily life to, to really make a difference. And I, I did, again, I appreciate you for joining us and just talking to me and I'm sure my fans do as well. The people who are watching do as well um and you guys just stay stay in school wear your masks um and keep doing your part so thank you so much i hope i see you sometime soon you. in ohio or la yeah that sounds wonderful thank you for all your leadership and entertainment too what you're doing is important you know representation of our community authentic representation of our community is so critical and so thank you for I your role in making the things. exact same thing to you you are equally as just uh, i i admire you so much so thank you so much um, thank you all. Everybody Don't say forget. Bye to Monica. Everybody say thank bye. You. Bye. Vote. Yes, please vote. Um, I can't wait to put this up on my page and see see what people think. I think it's gonna be really cool. Oh wait, I have one more question, and this is just a me question. I, honestly, okay. I'm just curious. I wanted to know about the electoral college. So, I don't know if you. I, I, what are the qualifications, and like, how do we know who's in it, and what what does that mean for us? Like, what is because I know that was a big impact. That was a, that made a big difference in the 2016 elections. Yeah. So what the electoral college means is that you know, depending on the population, every state gets a certain number of like votes, basically points, right? And that those and those um, points essentially add up. So as you know, when when the when election day comes and um, they're starting, or you know, after election day, because we don't know when all the votes are going to be, how long it's going to take to count all the votes, they will start showing um, you. Know, each state and, and, and who won whichever state and with each state they'll say and there are these many um, votes that go towards um, the tally right and so we can so there's the popular vote so the number like whoever people vote for and then based on the the you know the percentage of people who vote for a particular candidate in a certain state then there's a certain number of um, points or votes if you will 
that attach to that state. And so the those are added up as well as the the, the popular vote. And so um, you know, the, the big issue in twenty sixteen was that they said that based on the electoral college and the and um and how the the different um points added up from the electoral college, that was how the election was decided. So it's important to, un to pay attention to the popular vote, which is us voting, all of us voting and making sure that we're voting, you know, in all the places that where we live, because it's it's just as important to make sure that we can't take any state for granted. Basically, people need to be showing up and understanding that in their state where they live, um, there's also per the electoral college, there's a certain number of votes or, or points associated as that are essentially assigned to that state based on population. So it's like a point system then? Uh and it, essentially there's no like a, a group of people in suits and ties like who was the electoral college or it, yeah so there's yeah so there's um yeah so there are people there's like people who there there are the, so every state so they, they make a decision based on sort of the delegates so the delegates have a say in sort of you know who how, who's going to be uh, who they're voting for and so all of that is sort of taken together and that's make a determining factor in how the how the uh, election is eventually called interesting so how do we like find out like do we do we have access to like finding out who's in it or how do we know who's in the electoral college like yeah so uh you know that so the electoral college is a very complicated matter and there's a lot of com com conversation around whether it should be changed or you know should it be rethought and you know, and certainly, you know, there are a lot of resources out there that can help people understand better exactly how the electoral college works because, it, you know, it's confusing and, and um, you know, it, and it isn't always clear exactly who who has a, the final say in those matters. So I would say, you know, keep track of what Voto Latino is putting out related to the electoral college because I'm not a voting expert. So I can't even provide like the level of detail that people would want to know on this issue. And I don't want to pretend to be so I think, you know, really pay close attention to what folks like Voto Latino who are voting experts are saying about these issues so we can better understand, you know, where where to find um, the best info and also, you know, track the conversations about whether that's going to be changed. Yeah, the fact that it's not really spoken about, but it's so crucial and it, it, it makes such a big impact is kind of sketchy to me. Like, I want to, I definitely am going to do my research right after this. I got to, I got to do more research and I'll get back to you on that. But, um... Yeah, I think this is going to be one of the most crucial and critical elections in our lifetime. And I'm very excited to be a part of it in any way possible. So thank you again. Thank you so much for answering my, my questions and, and being so diligent about, about it. So thank you so much. No, thank you. And, and congratulations on your first time voting. I can't wait to see when you, you know, post something about your, your first vote. And, and thank you all who are uh, tuning in and also who are going to be encouraging folks to vote. It's really, really important. Yes, I'm gonna roll up in the mask and the I do like a whole dramatic red, white, and blue eye makeup and uh, nothing under here though because I don't makeup will get on my mask. But it's gonna be a look and it's gonna be it's gonna be a look. <laughs> All right, thank you. Can't wait to see it. Thank Take you. good care. You too. Stay safe out there. Bye. Bye. Bye.